Yes, how's it going guys and welcome to Octoween 2017. I haven't been making videos on my channel for a very long time, I have to address that. But this is a month where I do two videos, only two, for the month of Halloween. So let's get stuck into it. I've been wanting to do childhood trauma the whole year. When all those other YouTube movie reviewers were doing childhood trauma, I was like, fuck, I want to do this shit as well. But I waited all the way till Halloween to do it. And now I'm going to look at some of the shit that scared the hell hell out of me when I was little and some of the stuff that has scared heaps of other people as well just so it makes sense because shit that scared me isn't necessarily shit that scared everyone else so you got to make it relatable to everyone else <laughs> so let's get stuck into the childhood trauma just to clarify, this is shit that scared us when we were kids and not stuff that still necessarily scares us now. Though some of the stuff on this list is still pretty freaking scary. The very first is Crybaby Lane. This was a show that aired on Nickelodeon in the year 2000 and it scared heaps of people who watched it on the night it was aired. It was aired on October 31st, 2000, Halloween. This was of course a kids film, but it scared so many people because of the extreme shit that happened throughout it. This movie had seances, road gangs, and all types of shit, and it had scenes like this one. This movie had images like this. There's someone who wants to meet you, Andrew. And images like this. And yeah, you can imagine how this scared so many people. Even the ending. Wait, 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 wait. You gotta see this. I don't wanna see anything. Look, 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 look. You, you gotta see my collection. You wanna be in my collection? So the story Cry Baby Lane is actually based off a real life urban legend about an orphanage that caught fire with heaps of kids dying in it. So the person who wrote this based it off that and instead changed it to Cry Baby Lane having a father whose conjoined twins died. He was ashamed of one of the twins but liked the other. So what did he do? He sawed them in half and buried the bad twin on Cry Baby Lane and buried the good twin in a cemetery. And the urban legend in the movie goes that you can hear the cries of the dead twin on Cry Baby Lane and that's basically how the story goes. Yeah, that's pretty dark for a kids movie on Nickelodeon. I mean, this was very, very edgy. They wouldn't ever do this again. It was lost for a fair few years. I was going to do a Lost Media special on this, but this wasn't good enough for a Lost Media special, I felt, because it was just a really simple thing of how it was re-aired in 2011 after being lost for 11 years. The movie itself was actually an urban legend as well online until it was aired in 2011 and confirmed to be legit. So there was the urban legend in real life that the movie's based off, and there was the urban legend of the movie so you know a lot of confusing shit around this but yes it was a legitimate movie and it scared so many kids who first watched it on the night you can see why this film clearly didn't hit everyone's note and parents complained so much about it so Nickelodeon pretty much hid the film and never talked about it again so that is Cry Baby Lane what the actual shit glad I never saw that when I was a kid holy crap okay so the next one is something I've actually seen when I was little I didn't see Cry Baby Lane this one I did see Goosebumps Welcome to Dead House. They're gone. <gasps> it didn't work. Gosh. <laughs> you thought that wreath would keep you sane. I was four years old the first time I saw this. What the hell? It had scenes like this. The cat 
That is the scene I have childhood trauma from. This scene of them all melting, holy crap. And then the scene with them at the gate of the cemetery. Keep running! Don't stop! I was on edge for the entire last 15 minutes of this film. This episode of Goosebumps is actually pretty good in my opinion. I did review it a couple years ago for Octoween. It was the only thing I did for Octoween a couple years ago. It's on the playlist if you want to see it. It's a pretty cringy review, but you know. Here's Jets. This TV episode of Goosebumps was based off the very first book released, Welcome to Dead House, and it featured these two kids moving into their new house in a town called Dark Falls. Yeah, the name kind of gave it away. I already made that joke in the freaking review. And right off the bat, all the people in the town are weird. And I don't want to give it away, so spoilers from this point if you don't want to know. Five seconds for spoilers. A few moments later... Everyone in the town is a zombie! <laughs> Yeah, fucking kill me. Every single person in the town is a zombie and they're trying to turn the family into zombies. And that's why the climax of this episode gave me the creeps when I was a little kid. And when it ends, oh, I felt such a relief. So Welcome to Dead House scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid, but it didn't scare the shit out of me as much as Night of the Living Dummy 3 did. Ah! I still think Night of the Living Dummy 3 is the scariest Goosebumps episode by far. But people would disagree with me. One Day at Horrorland's pretty scary, and there's a fair few others that are very scary. You Can't Scare Me is not scary. I think that's the worst Goosebumps episode. Everything from Night of the Living Dummy just got me an edge. Nothing specifically stood out for me from when I was little, except this scene. Bye, Zane. See ya. I'll be seeing you real soon, cousins. Oh, shit. Oh my god, no! Always watch. <laughs> I still get Vietnam flashbacks to when I was a little kid. One Day at Horrorland was an episode that scared heaps of people, especially this scene with the disembodied head. Stay off the guillotine ride. Sharp turns. No talking. You know the rules. Oh god. I did watch One Day at Horrorland when I was a little kid. I was about 10 when I watched it on YouTube. And yes, that episode did give me the crease, but I didn't actually enjoy watching it. So we just move on from that. It is a good episode though, so if you want to check it out, the whole Goosebumps series is really shit. It's actually not bad. I'll be the judge of that. And the next thing in childhood trauma is anything from any of the three Indiana Jones movies. I watched these all when I was about five and six. Yes, five and freaking six years old watching the Indiana Jones movies. I honestly don't know what my dad was thinking. It says PG on the videotape, actually. Oh, for one second. It does say PG here and it says PG on all of them, but it's not freaking PG. I hate Temple of Doom. I'm halfway through watching Last Crusade right now, actually. And Raiders of the Lost Ark, well, just look at this. That scene was the reason I wasn't able to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark when I was little. My parents drew the line at Raiders of the Lost Ark. But I was allowed to watch Last Crusade, and this was the scene that gave me childhood trauma. God, I remember getting so scared from that the first time I watched it. 
Fuck. That's about the only thing I remember from Last Crusade that scared me. So moving on. In the movie Hook, I got really attached to <laughs> I got really attached to the Rufio kid. I originally hated the kid in the movie, and then I thought the kid was pretty cool because obviously it was his, you know, hideout, the Lost Boys. And then when he finally realized Robin Williams' character was Peter Pan, he was like, oh yeah, all right. And spoilers if you've never seen Hook and you want to see it, it spoils in five seconds. One, Rufio dies. He gets a knife into him, hooks sword into him. Fucking flies, I swear to- And it scared the shit out of me when I was little. Looky, looky, I got hooky. Hook <gasps> no! That is the childhood trauma I have from that movie. I first watched Hook when I was five as well. I don't know what my parents were thinking. I watched it with the family. All my brothers are older than me, so I was able to watch it. And yeah, bad idea. Fucking bad idea. Next thing, the Harry Potter jump scares in one and two. Far out. These scared the crap out of me when I first saw them when I was little. I hated these. This is the first one in Harry Potter 1. <laughs> I can just laugh at it now because it's freaking retarded. The jump scare in Harry Potter 2. And then there was three with the freaking book that started eating him. Still, the one that scared the crap out of me the most was from the first with the freaking book. And the dog scared me as well. I remember that scaring me. There's no earthly way of knowing what's the last pig's gonna be. Be. Fucking kill me. The last pick for childhood trauma. This is the one that scared the crap out of everyone. The Willy Wonka tunnel scene from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. There's no knowing where we're rowing or which way the river's flowing. Not a speck of light is showing, so the danger must be growing. Are the fires of hell a glowing? Is the grizzly reaper mowing? Yes, the danger must be growing for the rowers keep on rowing and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. We're there. Where? Here. Oh, what were they on? This scared the crap out of everyone when they first saw it. And once it's over, there's just such a relief. It's like, oh, thank f fuck we don't have to go back there again. But wait, no, nah, there's one more addition to this list. This is the thing that scared the crap out of me the most when I was little. This is the one thing I just couldn't watch when I was little. This is the one piece of shit that freaking got me. And I'm freaking over it. So that's it. No, I'm not even going to talk about it. That's the end of the fucking... Oh no. Even watching the opening, just hearing that music from a distance, anything to do with this freaking opening titles would get me on edge. Seriously though, this is something I have legitimate Vietnam flashbacks from. I don't remember many episodes in particular, but this one was one I remembered. Do you still want to know what's in this jar? <laughs> Shark tell you. <laughs> there were episodes where kids got lost. There were episodes when greedy kids were never seen again. There was some creepy shit in this show that still unnerves me to this day. This is probably the only thing that could still unnerve me a little bit. I know it's stupid, it's just a freaking cartoon. But look at this opening titles.
You are welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. Oh, God. That's I'm fucking done with that. So that's about all there is that scared me from when I was little. I can't really remember much more. I will make a second childhood trauma video if I find more shit that scared me when I was little. If you know some good stuff though, please leave it in the comment section. I will look at them. Just want to let you guys know, although there's only two videos this month for Octoween, I will be uploading a lot more when I'm done with the exams. I guarantee it. No, but I seriously will be uploading a lot more and hopefully trying to get YouTube famous like my man Rice Gum. I actually want to jump off. And there you have it, Crybaby Lane, an original movie and snick and pretty scary if you ask me. But you know, it was educational too. Chock full of valuable lessons such as, well, it's probably not a good idea to do seances in the graveyard. And you might want to be wary of people with fluorescent glowing eyes. Try not to kiss girls with spiders in their mouths. Don't trust guys who eat handfuls of worms. And above all, always be suspicious of your siblings. I'm Melissa John Hart, a.k.a. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, wishing you a happy haunting and a howling Halloween. Stay tuned for more Halloween weekend stick coming up next. Ah! <laughs> I don't want to fuck this chair up.